Okay, let's start by looking at one more combination leg rig. And let's be clear, even with that, we're not hitting on every possible permutation of limb rigging we could come up with. But this is one that could prove really useful. In fact, I think it works quite well for this character here. And so what's happening here is we've got a puppet-tooled leg and then a separately puppet-tooled foot. So we're using the puppet tool from hip to toe, but two separate meshes. Now what's great about this is that you get that very crisp joint at the ankle that allows you a lot of range of motion. But we also get the flexibility of the puppet tool in the foot, which can sometimes be really advantageous when you've got something with some texture. And this doesn't have a lot, but there's a little bit of a texture here and imagine if he had little sneakers with stripes or little markings or something uh, be a lot easier to puppet tool that than to joint it in terms of separating the art plus it's a different look and I think with this kind of a cartoony character having it be a little more flexible and rubbery and now I starched this fairly crisply but I could have starched this a little more loosely and gotten a little more curvature in the middle but I kind of liked the look of it pinching a little. It sort of felt like shoe leather a little bit, and I just liked the feel of it. Again, there are so many options, and that's one of the main things I'm hoping you absorb from this course. And many of your choices will be a lot more about your own personal preference or the preferences of the animators you're working with rather than the technical needs of the production necessarily. Of course, you always have to think about the technical needs of the production, but a lot of your decisions are eventually going to come down to personal preference when there's so many different ways of doing things, particularly when it comes to how you control things. So let's just take a peek under the hood at this leg rig and just talk over some of the very, very small differences between what we've done and what's been done here. So you can see what we have here is just a combination of the puppet tooled leg rig from the orange lady in the previous video and the puppet tooled foot rig from the hipster lady in the previous video and parented together in exactly the same way. So just like the orange lady's leg rig, we did not have to create a separate ankle piece because we had to put a puppet pin there and that generated a bone null that we were able to use as the bottom of our IK chain. And then we created a controller to control that IK chain and rigged all that up. And then on the foot here, we have a pin at the tip of the toe, a pin at the heel, and then we've placed two null objects right at that position a toe rotation null and a heel rotation null sitting right over that pin and then a pin at the heel and then of course a bone null for that as well. So in order to get the heel and toe roll we parent the toe tip to the toe rotation, the heel to the heel rotation. We tie the IK control for our leg also parent that to the heel rotation. We parent the artwork also to the heel rotation, which becomes kind of our base null for this foot. But then those two nulls, the heel and toe null, are then parented to the right foot controller, which of course has its anchor point at the ankle. So that allows that foot rig to rotate at the ankle as it should, but then we get the heel and toe roll off that center null. So again, just like we did it before, there's really no difference here. There's just subtle differences in the ankle null arrangement depending on whether the leg is puppet tooled or jointed or the foot is puppet tooled or jointed. You're just going to get you know, one or two different nulls here and maybe no nulls here and maybe no nulls here depending on the situation. But again, the basic pattern of the parenting stays the same. So I think we've covered the heel and toe roll and how it works with different types of foot rigs pretty thoroughly. The last thing that we need to look at is a 100% puppet tooled leg and we're going to do that next. 
But I wanted to show you one more way to control your heel and toe roll other than using these angle controls here. Now you can use a code similar to the one we used on our mechanical hand rigs to translate between the value range on a morpher slider to a value range on our controller slider. And with just a couple minor adjustments to that code, you could create a slider that would drive a rotation value. You can also use the morpher tool for that. You could create an animation with a rotation with a morpher tool, and you could use our code to translate that to a simple 0 to 100 slider or minus 100 to 100 slider or whatever you wanted for that control. So you can substitute these angle controls for slider controls. And there's, of course, many other more complicated options the deeper you get into rigging. But I'm going to show you one other fun way to do this. If you like the click and drag controls that we were playing around with for our fingers, I wanted to show you how you could set up something similar for a heel and toe roll if you weren't as crazy about the angle controls and wanted something a little more intuitive and hands-on. So let's take a look at this foot here. We've already got it all rigged up. The rigging is basically done. We just need to add the controls for the heel and toe roll. And we're going to skip doing the angle controls up on the controller. And we're going to make some click and drag controls instead. Now just to be clear, this is exactly the same rig as the right leg and foot we just looked at. The only difference will be in how we control the heel and toe roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is make and name and position a couple of null objects to be our controllers. OK, I've created my two null objects. And notice that I used the ankle control anchor point to create the one for the heel. And then I just used the toe tip null from the puppet tool rig to make the toe. And also notice that I've parented those to the left foot. So when we pick up and move that left foot, those controllers will come with us. Now let's set these up so that they will control our heel and toe roll. So I'm just going to open this up so we have a little more screen real estate here for the timeline. And we're going to create a one layer IK using these heel and toe controllers. Now a one layer IK is also called a look at because essentially it makes the rotation of an object follow the position of a controller. So that layer will, quote, look at that controller. Oddly enough, that's not the technique I actually use for eye aim controls. We'll look at those later. But a look at or one layer IK works really well for single layer appendages or props that don't need to bend in the middle but just need to rotate off of a single pivot point. And that's exactly the situation we have here. We want to be able to lift and rotate the toe and lift and rotate the heel without anything else moving except the leg responding as it should to the lifting and lowering of that heel. So this is super easy to set up. Let's just unlock the left heel and toe rotations here. And that's all we need is just these two rotator nulls. And we'll select the toe rotation, select the left toe controller, hit IK, and you see the only option is a one layer IK or look at and hit create. Now when I lift that controller up and down, the toe looks at where that controller is. It's a really nice intuitive control, just like the click and drag finger controls we used in the hand lesson. But it's just driving a single layer, in that case the null here, which because it is the parent of this toe tip null, it gives us that little rotation. Now there's a weight adjustment here. Don't really need that in this case, but that becomes more useful when we tie single layer IK chains to two and three layer IK chains in more advanced rigs. You can see there's also a manual FK control, which essentially will always work. You don't have to turn IK on and off. It just will automatically blend together. And that weight will adjust the difference between how much you put in FK and how much is happening from the controller. 
but not to get too confusing because the whole point of this is to make something very simple. It's a little more simple and intuitive from the standpoint of the animator, although it does add more controllers on the screen. And this starts to get into that personal taste issue of is it better to have angle controls up in your effects control and a clean field without a lot of nulls floating around? Or is it better to have this more kind of natural click and drag control, but then have to have some more nulls on the screen? So much here comes down to personal taste and personal choice. It's really important if you're working with an animator to discuss these things with them. Give them some of these options so that they can tell you uh, what they like and what feels more comfortable for them. If the animator is yourself, just do what feels right to you. And it's good to try both. Try animating with click and drag, try animating with angle controls, and see what feels more right to you. Let's go ahead and hook up that heel control and finish up. So I'm going to grab the heel rotation, hold down the command key, and select the heel controller, IK, one layer IK look at. And now we can lift that heel up and down with this click and drag controller, and it drives our IK chain just like it should. And all of this works with our master foot controller, so we can still just pick up the foot, move it around, grab that heel, lift it up, and so on. Really nice control. Let's undo back here and zero these out and clean this up. Our last step is to lock our properties that we're not using. But in the case of these little click and drag controls, we really only need one value, which is in Y. We really don't necessarily need the X value in order to get these to work. And let's also think about this from the animator's perspective. If you are having to animate both X and Y positions when really only one value would do the job, that's just making things more complicated than it needs to be. And you'll have to deal with little extra wiggles on the motion paths on these controllers and so on. So let's go ahead and lock all of these properties, but let's first right click or control click on the position value and separate the dimensions into X and Y. And we'll do that for both of these. And now we'll lock everything except the Y value. Now when I click and drag on these controls, they're constrained to simply move in Y. That makes this control a lot cleaner and a lot simpler for the animator who only has to deal with these single numeric values. If you wanted to really knock this little rig out of the park, you could maybe spend a little more time arranging the controllers so you get a cooler looking little graphic interface. But this is a very nice intuitive set of controls for this foot. So the last leg situation we're going to look at here is on our superhero woman a more realistic character. And this is a case where we really didn't have any good opportunities to joint at the knee, didn't really have any good opportunities to joint easily at the ankle. So to a certain degree, we're sort of forced into puppet tooling this whole leg, which as I said in the previous video, I don't really recommend if you can help it, but you can always help it. Now before we dive into rigging this leg, there's something else I want to talk about, and it's a situation that comes up pretty commonly with highly detailed or more realistic characters when you're dealing with the interaction between the upper part of the thigh and the pelvis and where it attaches to the pelvis. This is a situation where our character is not designed to have a perfectly circular overlap because that probably would have been difficult anatomically speaking, but it's also a situation you may run into if you didn't get to work with the designer or design the character yourself and weren't able to create that perfect overlapping. So let's look specifically at what I mean here. I'm going to turn off a lot of these layers here, and we're just going to focus on the legs and the torso for the moment. And let's start by looking at this right leg here. This is the one we're actually going to rig up in a minute. 
and I spent a lot of time, just to make sure this is very clear, I spent a lot of time playing around with this anchor point to get a good rotation on this hip. And this is as close as I could get with the artwork as it was. So it kind of looks okay through here. That's all working pretty well. But whoops, we get a pretty unattractive looking situation happening here. This is also not fantastic. It's not super realistic anatomically, but it's not terrible. And this is really kind of a problem because that just doesn't look very good at all. And we're really breaking the style of the artwork. And even if we're only going to go to here, I mean, I had it, okay, bent a little extreme there, but but even to there, it's looking pretty rough. So there's something that we want to fix just so we get a better looking rotation there on that leg. Now I'll say that this is sort of a, a really continual problem that you run into with this kind of character and there is another option. In this case I think we'll be able to get this to work relatively well, but there is another option for where this kind of jointing isn't a possibility. Imagine for example if her straps and uniform passed right over that jointed place and you rotated that leg and broke that strap, it would not look very good pretty quickly. In those cases, we can actually rig the entire torso and leg as one puppet mesh so that we get the advantage of puppet tool bending here with this front leg and hip. And then the back leg remains jointed. We'll take a look at a rig like that when we get to torsos. But in the meanwhile, we'll just try to fix what we've got and work with these jointed. It's usually better, in terms of range of motion, it's usually better to try to joint at the hips when you can. But that gets extra tough with these characters with a lot of texture, shading, detail, and so forth. So let's look at this other leg too, where I also spent some time playing around with the anchor point. And we've got another problem, which is this, this sort of exaggerated buttock here uh, is not looking very good when she kind of kicks her leg way up. Now, I want this character, because this character is a superhero, to have a pretty wide range of motion. Now, it doesn't look too bad up to here, but it starts to look pretty weird after that. And I don't like the rigs to have limitations that they don't need to have. So that's another thing that I'd like to fix before we move forward. And the truth is I've actually already fixed these, but I wanted to show you the problems before I fix them and then walk you through what that fix was. So in this case, I pre-composed both of the legs into their own pre-comp. And I did this leaving all attributes in this comp so I preserved my anchor point and so forth. Inside here I applied a mesh warp to reshape the art. So let's turn that mesh warp back on and you can see what I did with it. I'll select it so you can see. I just stretched up this line and kind of bent it over a little bit and just kind of redrew that line with the mesh warp to curl up and then I also flattened down this little peak so it is more of a rounded, more of a circular overlap there at the hip. So let's go back and take a look here at how that looks with that turned back on. And it's a little different than the design and it's honestly not quite as pretty. That was nicer when there wasn't that extra wrinkle there in the clothing but we now have a much greater range of movement with that leg and I can lift this leg really quite high because I took that peak down. We didn't even try this before but that peak of artwork covered up the, uh, the side of the butt here a little bit when it kicked up really high. So now we can really do pretty exaggerated movements. Now we still lose it some right here but take a look at this. That's pretty crazy. You're pretty much never going to get your leg back that far. This is as far as we can get. 
keeping that line together and you could maybe cheat it just a little bit further quickly in a fast move. But that's not bad and that little edit has definitely improved things in terms of range of motion. Now let's take a look at the other leg here. I did the same thing. I pre-composed that and I did the same exact thing of putting a mesh warp on and I just took that big kind of pinch out of that leg so it's just a little bit of a softer shape and again a little more rounded and let's go back and take a look at the result of that and now I can lift that leg really really high once again now when I come back this way I'm getting a separation there in the torso so that's a little bit of a problem because I would like to be able to pull that leg back so let's go ahead and do the same edit on the torso here and just pull this line out a little bit like we pulled this line up using the mesh warp so we get a little wider range of motion yet. So once again I'm going to select just the torso layer and we're going to pre-compose and very important leave all attributes in the rig comp. That's really important. And inside here we can select that layer and add the mesh warp. And I'm going to turn our resolution at least up to half. That should be good enough. And we want to add a few more rows here. So we have a, just a little more control over that. And let's get some columns over so that we can grab that little line. And then now I'm going to stretch that down. We'll put some curvature back in there to kind of match the curve there. And it might have a little pinching here, so I'm just going to pull that back in there to get rid of any little pinches that show up. That actually looks pretty good. All right, let's rotate that leg back. Hey, that's looking much, much better. Now we do get a weird sort of lumpiness here that's not it's totally perfect, but working with flat art is very difficult. Now we could maybe shape this just a little bit more and try to make that work just a little bit better. So let's soften that line a little bit and maybe even take it back a little bit here. And let's stretch it out just a little bit more. And let's see if that works a little better. Yeah, that's a little little better. There's still a little lump there, but it's not quite exaggerated. It certainly works coming back this far. I wonder if we want to maybe just shift this anchor point just a little bit more. All right, there. Now we've got the anchor point in a spot that's looking pretty good at a pretty wide range of motion. And that's what we're looking for here. We want that joint to look as good as it can look and let that leg go as far as it can go. Now the more you can prepare for this stuff when you're actually designing and drawing or illustrating the character, the better. But this is a good example of how you can tweak things and fix things a little bit as you're rigging. All right, now that we've got those hip joints working a little bit better, Let's focus in on rigging up one of these legs. Now we're definitely going to have some challenges with our starching here, particularly down at the ankle. And we're going to try to put in a heel and toe roll even though we have a very short stubby boot here. That's going to be challenging and we're going to have to accept a limited range of motion there. But let's try to get it put in anyway. Now I'm going to speed through the next few steps as we've seen this before. All right, so we've added our bones and our puppet pins here, and we've uh, quick added a control or two just to help speed us along here. Again, right at the ankle position there. And we're almost ready to add our IK chain and hook this all up, but we have to add a couple nulls first. So we have a heel 
lower leg and upper leg here. And those are going to be the three layers of our AK chain. So one of the things we need is another controller here to be the hidden controller for our IK chain. Whoops, put that above the heel. And then we've got a toe pivot here to pivot the toe, but we also need a second null at the same position to pivot the heel. So let's go ahead and add another controller right here. Drag that down. This, of course, won't be a controller. Oh, we got to switch those around there. Color this green, and we're also going to make this a guide layer just so they stack neatly there. So there is our heel and toe rotation nulls. Oops, and we can definitely make this one smaller. Just so we can see what we're doing a little easier here. Now we're ready to parent this up. Let's first get our IK chain going here. So heel to lower leg, lower leg to upper leg, the leg artwork to the upper leg as well and then select from the bottom of the chain to the top and the controller and two layer IK with goal. Now just to stop us for a second here, keep in mind we're working with a single puppet mesh but we've just created an IK chain of just the leg. So you can see we get crazy stretching and activity happening because the other parts of the foot are not in the chain yet. But that's okay, we're going to put this all together. So the toe tip to the toe rotation, the IK control for the leg to the heel rotation, and the two rotation nulls to the foot controller. Now in this case I have no need for an IK orientation switch because this character is very realistic. I'm never going to bend this leg backwards like I might with a cartoony character. So I'm not going to bother to add those controllers but we will add heel and toe roll. Now this isn't going to look very good yet until we get our starch done, but let's go ahead and add the heel and toe roll controls. All right, now that we've got our heel and toe roll working, you can see some of the starching challenges we have here. When we lift and lower the toe, we're getting all this weird counter movement and the bottom of the foot looks really squishy. And again, this is going to be a tough one. I'm not sure if we're really going to get that toe rotation to work all that well, but hopefully we can at least get a good heel lift there. And just, again, part of the reason this is so challenging is that the foot is at a three-quarter angle instead of more straight to the side. The more to the side it is, the easier this would be, and we wouldn't have to try to bend so much artwork right in the middle here. But we're also seeing some issues up here in the knee. We've obviously got some pinching here. And here at the ankle, we're getting all kinds of stuff going on. And we've got to clean that up too so this looks a lot more realistic. Let's make sure we zero out this controller before we get into trouble. And let's go ahead and add some starch. All right, this starch is looking pretty good. Now it's not perfect. I think I should have maybe repositioned the pins just a little bit lower on the foot because the toe roll is having a little bit of trouble looking convincing. The heel roll looks pretty good. Now it breaks down if I go too extreme, but again with a realistic character and a 100% puppet tooled rig, I've got to expect some limitations on my range of motion. And that looks pretty darn good up until about right in there. So that's pretty decent. And the ankle flexes pretty realistically. I'm getting some counter 
flexing on that uh, calf there, but honestly, there's not a lot I could do because of all this artwork around the ankles. If we didn't have these big bulgy things on the ankles, I could have left an area of stretchiness right here so we wouldn't get all that counterbending in the calf. But this design happens to have all this extra stuff around the ankle. And you can see the result. As I starch this, I had to basically starch all the way down past the ankle and we only left this one little bendable area here through the middle of the foot. Otherwise, we would have bent and distorted this artwork way too much, and it would have been too obvious with these shapes twisting and distorting. Now again, as I'm recording these lessons to try to show you as many techniques and tricks as I can, I'm probably not taking all the time I would to really explore all the starching options. There might be a better option. What I actually think the better option would be is a mixture of jointing and puppet tooling. I think the artwork should be separated here and a joint made with the ankle here so that the foot can basically be one piece and these can rotate as a solid piece. I think that would actually be the ultimate solution for this leg. But this is really good experience to explore what happens when you try to work a 100% puppet tooled rig in a realistic circumstance where the situation is not ideal. And that's an important thing I feel about teaching about rigging is that I can show you a lot of solutions to a lot of problems, but there's going to be stuff that comes along that you never thought of that just, oh my goodness, the shape of this mesh happens to cause a pinch in this really uncomfortable area or the designer happened to put something right on a joint that makes it very difficult to either joint or puppet tool, which is sort of what we have here. So you want to be prepared with as many different tricks up your sleeve as possible. And the more you do it, the more you will find creative solutions to your individual rigging problems. All right, now one other thing that we want to fix here is not with the starching, but it's with the overlapping. Once again, this foot is turned towards us, and because it is turned towards us, it feels as though this overlap is happening in the wrong direction. So let's get our overlap tool and see if we can get this fixed. And again, if you ever don't see your mesh with one of the puppet tools, select the layer, hit the E key, select the puppet effect, and then you'll see that mesh. And I think what we want to do is squirt a blob right up here. I think that did it. Unfortunately, it's covering. Yeah, that was pretty close. Let's just adjust that a little bit. And this is tricky because it's hard to see through. I'm trying to get rid of that little curl right there at the end. Hey, that looks pretty good. Let's try that moving here. I'm getting a little flicker of something there. All right, I'm still seeing just a little bit of flicker there, but it's not too bad. And uh, I don't want you guys to watch me adjust settings all day. Um, but we could probably spend a little time repositioning that overlap and get rid of that little bit of a that little bit of funkiness happening right in there. Our knee is flattening out just a little bit. I might try to adjust the starch just a tiny bit more to see if we can fix that. So I'm going to go back to the starch tool. And I'm going to bring this down a little closer. And I think we need to bring this up a little more, but we don't want to disturb our line down here. So I'm going to bring that a little closer. Yeah, that's opening up that knee a little bit better or widening that knee, I should say. There we go. Let's once again tuck this one in. Oops. Need to widen it. All 
All right, let's see if that looks a little better. Yeah, I think so. That's looking a little bit better. Now, starching and using the overlap tool, it's fussy business. You need to take time and set aside time to fine-tune these things to get them to look the way you want them to. I would probably spend a little more time fussing around with this starch in order to really perfect this leg. But we've got pretty decent, fairly realistic motion. Since we spent so much time making sure it worked with the torso, let's turn on the rest of the artwork here just so we can see how this leg looks in context. And yeah, that's working pretty good. That boot there looks a little funny as we lift that leg. But note that when I unbend the foot, that relaxes that shape out, and that actually looks pretty good. And that overlap looks pretty nice as well, and we're getting a nice joint up here in the hip. Overall, pretty good for a very, very difficult situation. Okay, we've looked at a lot of different leg and foot rigs here, although they clearly share a lot of commonalities, unlike the hand rigs where there was a lot more variety. In my opinion, heel and toe roll, particularly heel roll, is really an essential element in a good leg and foot rig. So you're going to want that in all but a few rare situations. Now move on to the exercise video and see the project we have set up for you.